Hello, so I wanted to do another video talking about stab proof vests, or more importantly stab resistant vests, and in this video I wanted to talk about a lot of the very strange rumours or myths I've heard about these vests, where people come up with all sorts of rumours why they wouldn't work or they're completely useless or whatever. So in this video it's going to be pretty straightforward, I'm going to come cover some of the points I've heard, and then we're going to explore them, see if there's any merit to some of these points whatsoever, because some of them have some merit, some don't at all, and then we'll... Um, you know, evaluate that. So one of the ones I hear quite often is these vests are too heavy or too uncomfortable to wear for any reason, um, so you wouldn't be ever be able to wear them. And that is totally false. Now, obviously, if it's a very hot summer's day, wearing one of these vests covertly under a coat might not be a good idea for obvious reasons, mostly because you've got a big coat on top of it. But these vests themselves are actually very comfortable. Um, because obviously, if you think about having to wear it all day, Police officers and a lot of emergency services or security guards have to wear them all day along with a whole host of other equipment, you know, like handcuffs, maybe firearms, um, you know, helmets, other items, pepper spray, stuff like that. If they can wear it all day with all that gear and radios and everything on these vests, then a regular person should be able to wear one of these vests with no problem whatsoever, you know, just for a bit of time period. Because as I used to say, when I used to wear one of these vests to work and back, I would basically wear it on the bus and at the bus stops and walking to and from work. At work, I didn't wear it, it went in my locker. And then, you know, when I came home from work, it would go on, I'd put a small jacket over the top of it, so nobody could see that I was wearing a Kevlar vest. And then I'd walk back, you know, to the bus stops and things like that. So, it's completely false where people say these are too heavy and everything to wear. Now, maybe some people are actually legitimately confusing them with something like a plate carrier. Here we go, here's a military plate carrier. Yeah, that might be a bit too uncomfortable and bulky to wear all the time, but we're not on about military plate carriers. We're not on about, you know, bullet resistant, um, massive resistant um, military vests. What we are on about is simple police style lightweight Kevlar vests. Now, how these work is, yes, there are some similarities with a military vest, because that would have Kevlar front and back panels in it, um, but that also contains plates, hence the name plate carrier, and lots more utility kind of things. With a vest like this, all you've really got in it is a Kevlar front and back panel, and those Kevlar panels are generally spike and stab resistant. So how that works is they have the Kevlar layer to work against firearms, and then they add a layer that's protective against knives and spikes, and some of these vests vary. Some will be thicker and offer a better level of bullet resistance and stab resistance. Some will be thinner and offer, you know, less level of bullet and stab resistance. Some will do more than, you know, one and the other. So you'll get some bullet resistant vests that are totally not stab proof. And you'll get some that are completely stab resistant vests that are, you know, not bulletproof. Because unless you buy a combination vest, you're not going to get either one. But the combination vests offer a very good level of, you know, dual protection. They're not really skimping in one area for the other thing. So that brings me on to another point I've heard people mention. Where they say things like, these vests, um, you know, will offer you no protection from being stabbed if they're bullet resistant. Or they'll offer you no protection from bullets if they're stab resistant. Again, completely depends on the model of best vest you buy. Again, it's not a plate carrier. It's not designed to protect you from something like a Kalashnikov or an M16. What this vest is designed to protect you from is pistol calibre cartridges at maybe distance of, distance of up to about 100 yards um, and being stabbed. So these vests have generally a stab and spike resistance rating. Now depending on what country you're in, these vests and you know rating systems can vary. But in general what they do is they have um, a score against firearms, which is normally what the most easiest one to use I think is, I think it's the NIJ level, which is the US system, which is has an A and a number. So, for example, it would go level 2A, level 2, level 3A. 3A offers the best protection, but uh, out of all those I listed, but it would be the thickest and heaviest. Um, so, generally, the A means it's not as good as the full thing, so a 2A isn't as good as a 2, for example. Um, but a level 2 vest, for example, most of these end up being level 2. Uh, they're rated against things like 9mm and 45 ACP, uh, probably 50 yards plus. Um, so, you know, it's certainly better than nothing. And again, it depends. If somebody's got a really powerful magnum, you know, load, yeah, it's probably going to shoot through the vest. But if they've got a pocket pistol or 9mm or whatever, you know, without um, full metal jackets, you know, they're not going to go through this vest. So it completely depends. So this is one that isn't false, the next point I'm going to bring up, but it's one that I hear for some reason from some people. 
and it's these vests wouldn't protect you from getting shot in the head or stabbed in the neck. Well, no, because they don't cover that area. The point of this vest is it protects the vital organs it covers. If you wanted head protection, you'd buy a helmet. But strangely, I see people mentioning that you shouldn't buy one of these vests because it doesn't protect your head. You know, that's, that's a strange point to raise, isn't it? I suppose it's technically true, but it's completely irrelevant, almost. Now, I've also heard some claims where people are saying that this vest doesn't use a certain system of protection or it uses another system. Now, these can be completely valid points because some of these vests use different systems. Here's one uh, police Kevlar panel I have that I've done tests on before. So you can see the stuff, that the yellow bit, that is the Kevlar. That is the actual, you know, bullet resistant part. The stab resistant part is the chain mail. So how it works is they've put riveted chain mail in front of the Kevlar panel. The idea is the chain mail stops the knives from going through, the Kevlar stops the bullets from going through. Pretty simple. Um, that's one way of doing it. Some of these vests um, have different kinds of systems in front, like they'll use a different kind of thin material in front that's tried as this work as a stab resistant layer. Some use this weird stuff that looks like sandpaper that's stab resistant and they put that in front or behind of the Kevlar panel. Again, you know, that's designed to catch knives and spikes and, um, you know, the uh, Kevlar itself is designed to catch the bullets. So they can vary a lot. The point is, as long as you're buying something that's got all the proper NIJ rating systems or whatever, you know what you're getting. Another um, fallacy I hear of these, or like sort of a poorly thought out point, is that if you're buying one, you should definitely buy a brand new one from a security company costing £300 plus, and uh, not an ex-police issue one. Now, yes, that would certainly offer you a better level of protection, and you can often get them custom fit to be the exact right size for you. However, the police vests are not bad. In general, the police just retire the vests because after five years or something of use, they're not allowed to use them anymore under quite strict health and safety and sort of work legislation things. So they have to retire them or have them refurbished, at which point they're sold as surplus. So as long as it's in a good condition, it's still going to work. The point is the police have to have, you know, due to um, lots of union laws and everything protecting them, a very good level of um, protection. And as a civilian, you probably don't need that same level of protection, so that's a bit irrelevant. Now, of course, if you have the money to spend, yes, a top-of-the-line vest is better, because you can probably get one that's thinner, more comfortable, fits under your clothes better and everything. You know, all those sort of points. However, for a lot of people, and this is the point I want to stress, let's say you don't have much to spend because, you know, you're not all that rich, you might have to work in a bad area, this is why you need one of these vests. You know, you're not going to have a lot of spare money because of ob the obvious factors. Now, if you had the option of spending something like 30 to 50 pounds and you could get a vest like this with a front and a back panel in it, or you had the option of spending 300 pounds and getting, you know, a really good custom fit vest which might offer a slightly better level of protection, it might be getting a vest like this or getting no vest at all. So for that purpose, a vest like this, you know, is better than nothing at all. Okay, and now I want to come to the last point that I've heard a few times, which is a very strange point, and there is some validity to it, but again, it's using common sense. So, some people say you need better better social skills or better social awareness skills, you know. There's no need to have a stab-proof or a bullet-resistant vest if you're in a bad area. You know, if you're keeping alert and everything, you're never going to get stabbed or shot. Well, first, you can never say never, can we? Because, you know, there's a good probability that you could be stabbed or shot if you're in a very dangerous area. Um, even if you're being completely alert. Obviously being alert greatly increases your chances because you know you can be more aware of what's going on. But the fact is, vest is there, you know, this is the thing you hope you never have to use, but it's there, if, you know, in case of it. So if you were stabbed or shot, you know, being aware and everything isn't going to stop anything bad happening to you past that stage. That might help you keep out of trouble in the first place, but once, you know, the worst case scenario has happened and somebody's pulled a knife and starts stabbing you, um, or you've been shot or something, you know, one of these vests is going to help you in that scenario. So again, I would totally agree with the point, it's a very good thing to be alert, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can do that instead of the vest. Because if you were going to use that line of logic, you could, um, you know, say something like, well, the police just need to have better situational awareness, therefore they wouldn't ever need Kevlar or bullet resistant vests, you know, all that sort of thing. Which I think is a completely invalid point. It's valid to an extent, which is, as said, you know, it's much better to be alert than not alert, but that goes for anything, you know, like crossing the road, checking the traffic before you cross the road, you know. You're less likely to get hit by a car if you're not alert, but there's lots of these things where I think it's invalid to say, you know, these vests are useless because if you're alert you could never be shot or stabbed. 
No, there's, I can think of a lot of scenarios where you might have to do a job in an inner city area that might have, you know, quite high crime rates where one of these vests would be invaluable. Because, for example, if you're waiting at a bus stop, um, it's, you know, quite dark or whatever, there's not many people around, somebody pulls a knife on you and demands your wallet, you've got one of these vests on, you know, if they did stab you, you're going to be in a much better scenario than if you didn't have one of these vests on and they stabbed you. Again, what's the person going to say to that? Just don't wait at bus stops. Well, that's not going to be an option for a lot of people. So hopefully this video has summed up with these vests some of the points about them that are, you know, valid and not valid. Yeah, um, I can think of reasons you wouldn't want to wear one of these vests, but for the most part, I think if you are in a dangerous area, wearing one of these vests is certainly better than not wearing one of these vests. And again, it comes down to it, because I get weird comments where people say, oh, but yeah, I bet you don't wear that vest every day. Well, I don't wear the vest every day when I'm at home, because I work in a much nicer place now. I don't need to wear this vest going to and from work. But when I worked in, you know, an inner city area that was higher in crime rates, then it was a very sensible idea. You know, when people were saying, oh, no, no, you wouldn't be strong enough to walk around with that on all day. Well, I'm certainly strong enough to walk around with, you know, a kilo vest on going to and from work. That's not a problem at all. You know, as I said, there's lots of people that carry a lot more weight than this all day and don't have a problem, so why is it suddenly, you know you wouldn't ever be able to wear this to work and back. Just completely silly and valid points. So anyway, I hope this video has been helpful, and hopefully if you're on the, you know, borderline of some things, it's cleared up what these vests can and can't do, and some of the very strange arguments you hear people make, you know, either way about these vests, because, as I said, there seems to be a lot of misinformation about stab vests, before finishing the video I should also no, say no it's not illegal to have one of these vests because for some reason I now and again, well at least not in the UK, I know it is in some places but I have people say no in the UK you're not allowed to buy um, ex-police vests, that's illegal. No, no it's perfectly legal.